This is Gary Chalmers. He is superintendent of the Springfield School District, responsible for slashing school budgets, implementing new policies, and managing the individual school administrators. But really, most of his job is yelling at Skinner, even firing him on multiple occasions. However, the two occasionally team up to thwart the kids, produce documentaries, go on a road trip, and even double dating. Superintendent Chalmers is a widower, as his wife Rosemary passed away some time ago. They had one daughter together, Shauna Chalmers, who he desperately tries to connect with. It rarely goes well. But hey, it still beats hanging out with Skinner. This is the history of Superintendent Chalmers. For today's Simpsons Histories number 30, I wanted to tackle someone that I had been saving for a special occasion, and for a couple different reasons. One is his main role as the consummate straight man on The Simpsons, that disapproving voice of reason amongst this Springfield elementary chaos. You wonder, is this guy 100% no-nonsense, or is there a wackier side to his personality? Why is Chalmers such a good comedic foil for a Skinner? And secondly, Chalmers has one of the sneaky good character arcs in the back half of Simpsons history. The Simpsons somehow made this guy deep. It's like a magic trick. So I want to see how they did it. How did Chalmers transform from being a one-note plot device to a three-dimensional character? Let's go back to the beginning to find out. Superintendent Chalmers made his first appearance a bit later than most Simpsons regulars, in his case all the way toward the end of season 4 in Whacking Day. However, despite arriving late, he is practically fully formed, right from the get-go. Almost all of his main functions are here. His visit makes Principal Skinner extremely nervous, to the point of hiding away the bullies. Chalmers immediately comments on the poor performance of the students and is ready to cut the curriculum down. We also get a taste of his cynical and dubious view towards Skinner. He sees right through the banners as transparent toadying, but when he hears Ralph ask, what's a battle? He eventually kind of sort of buys Skinner's unconvincing explanations. In the end, his backside gets totally blown up by Willie's tractor, he changes his mind about promoting Skinner, and asks why the cafeteria lady is the nurse. All in all, a very comprehensive introduction for the new guy. Initially, they didn't use Chalmers for one-off scenes or brief cutaway jokes, because in his very next appearance in Season 5, he plays yet another crucial role. This one introduced his patented Skinner yell, and is the first time he fires him. Or he called Skinner a liar, I'm not entirely sure. I like how they gave him this scene in the auditorium that shows off some of his inherent awkwardness. Flanders makes a pun and the kids applaud, Chalmers tries his hand at one and gets nothing. It's just a damn popularity contest! Interestingly, he seems to be completely immovable by Bart's strategy in the end with him only turning on Flanders because he dared to say a prayer in public school. Thus begins Chalmers' complicated and confusing relationship with religion. Season 6 seems to be where Chalmers enters the rotation of random Simpsons regulars. In the PTA disbands, he gets on Skinner's case about the strike, pointing out the car is honking. Also, he punches some guy at the bank. In Round Springfield, we get another awkward Chalmers visit this time being shocked by a student on the floor and pointing at the school snake. In Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 1, he's cynically joking about all the students getting full scholarships and banters with Skinner over the newspaper headline. Once again, Skinner somehow gets away with this explanation. Also, I never thought about it before, but we gotta blame Chalmers here for letting Mr. Burns beat them to the punch on the oil. That's the superintendent's job to organize, and he blew it. At the very least, he was able to provide Skinner's alibi in Part 2, so some good came out of it. In Season 7's Team Homer, we get another school inspection, with him getting trampled by kids before he's able to give a perfect 10. They're definitely toying with Skinner's emotions more with this one, getting so close to a good review before everything immediately goes wrong. At the end, Skinner runs off in horror to check on his mom, and Chalmers amusedly goes along. He must have liked what he saw, because in Bart the Fink, four episodes later, he's literally dating Agnes Skinner. Geez, they're playing around with every awkward sitcom cliché with these two. Oh, speaking of awkward sitcom clichés, we also have Season 7's 22 short films about Springfield and those steamed hams. 
I had referenced their awkward banter and Skinner's unconvincing explanations before, but obviously this is the grand culmination of that dynamic. Chalmers perfectly alternates between his dubious questioning and his inexplicable acceptance. The whole thing is so damn silly. I don't think I gotta go into more detail on why steamed hams works. It kind of speaks for itself. After that masterpiece, I'm kind of surprised that Bill and Josh didn't just plaster him all over the walls of season 8. Instead, it's just a minor joke in Bart After Dark, in Lisa's date with Density, he's faking out Skinner with his yelling, and then is crying at home like a little girl over the stolen H from his car. In Grade School Confidential, he catches Skinner and Krabappel at the movies and bugs Bart with his dumb questions. When he finds out about the relationship, he gives them an ultimatum and then fires them when they refuse. At the conclusion, he is utterly shocked by Skinner's admission of being a virgin and he gives him his job back. I also really like how this sequence underlines how self-aware Chalmers is about what kind of show he's on, sarcastically calling out Bumblebee Man and Sideshow Mel's appearance before Mel claps back at him. In the Mike Scully years, seasons 9 through 12, Chalmers continued his hot and cold streak of playing big roles in a couple of episodes, but otherwise totally disappearing. The Principal and the Pauper is a heavy Skinner episode, so logically Chalmers is going to be all over it. He is the one who planned the fateful 20th year celebration for Skinner that supposedly ruined The Simpsons forever. Thanks a lot, Gary. And afterward, Chalmers is stuck awkwardly trying to implement the new Principal Skinner and demanding the kids respect him. In Lisa Gets an A, we are introduced to Super Nintendo Chalmers and get the first instance of him conspiring with Skinner. He explains to Lisa how the school was the worst in Missouri and how badly they need the grant money, eventually convincing her to go along with it. And he and Skinner successfully predict her change in conscience, setting up a fake Comptroller Atkins just in case. Skinner and Chalmers are getting along so well that they're double dating just a few episodes later. All right, Skinner, I get that the previous situation was uncomfortable for you, but double dating with your mom is called overcorrecting. I guess the date ended up going quite badly, as the rest of the Scully era consists of Chalmers getting on his case. Skinner, the sexless freak, wrecks their who's on first routine only six seconds in. He yells at Skinner for allowing Bart to do an offensive comedy routine for the Olympic judges without hearing the act first. Chalmers, by the way, has nothing to make fun of, being born in Queens, going to Ball State, moving to Intercourse, Pennsylvania, and vacationing at Lake Titicaca. Then in season 12, he criticizes the wimpy mural that Skinner commissions and questions him about his ball sack after being snowed in. In typical Chalmers fashion, he accepts that there was a good explanation and happily snowmobiles away. With Al Jean taking over in season 13, we reach that inevitable branching point in Simpsons histories, where some characters fall by the wayside while others get thrust into the spotlight. Superintendent Chalmers definitely falls into the latter category. Al Jean loves this guy, even more than Bill and Josh somehow, as he plays an important role in so many later Simpsons adventures. He even was given three Spotlight episodes, two of which happened quite recently. To be honest, many of his appearances are extremely similar functionally. It's always one of three things. School plot stuff, Skinner relationship stuff, or learning more about Chalmers himself. So once again, I think it's better to ditch the chronological approach and break down each topic individually. Let's start out by getting to know Chalmers better on a personal level away from Springfield Elementary. What did these later seasons bring to his character? Chalmers' marital status had been a point of confusion in the series, as we'd seen him dating Agnes on a couple of occasions, and then at the end of a season 17 episode, he makes out with the new principal. In season 22, Skinner finds out that Chalmers and Kerbopel are doing it. In that same season, Skinner asks Chalmers to be his wingman when they attend a dating seminar together. I think early on, the accepted premise was that Chalmers was an unmarried bachelor. However, things changed significantly in his first spotlight, season 23's Bart Stops to Smell the Roosevelts. In this one, Skinner pushes back and goads Chalmers into taking responsibility for teaching Bart. Chalmers used to be a teacher in the old days of a violent John Hughes pastiches, and he sparks Bart's interest in history via Teddy Roosevelt. Later, at his house, 
we can see a decorative urn in the background with a picture of him with a woman. On a camping trip, he gets up early to watch the sunrise, explaining that the morning is when he misses his rosemary the most. Interesting. So Chalmers is actually a widower and has some tragedy in his past. For what it's worth, this detail has been mentioned on occasion, such as in season 30 when he thanks Skinner for making his wife's death anniversary even more depressing. Rosemary Chalmers is quite the mysterious figure in Simpsons history, as we don't know when she passed away or from what cause. The only previous mention of Chalmers having a wife occurred in the tag of season 16's Pranks to Rap. Chalmers wants to be in their entourage, even if they're making fun of him, because, quote, his wife is very sick. Yes, that's right. They dropped Chalmers' backstory into the frickin' tag of Pranks to Rap in this dumb one-off joke. And then they stuck with it. What the hell even is this show? So presumably, Rosemary Chalmers passed away sometime around season 16 or 17. That doesn't explain why he's running around with Agnes before then and kissing this principal right after. Either Chalmers is some kind of sex addict, they had a rocky marriage, or Simpsons continuity is a chaotic non-linear nightmare. Or maybe it's all three. Let's join newly separated Gary Chalmers as he sexes his way through non-linear time and space only on Disney+. Plus. In season 25, we discover that Shauna is actually Chalmers' daughter, when she's creeping on Bart some more to make her father mad. My god, between this and Pranks to Rap, this is the weirdest set of character reveals. What's next? We're gonna hear about Chalmers' abusive father in a random therapy joke? Oh wait. Now, we had heard of a mysterious daughter in season 20, when Skinner randomly remarks about buying lots of wrapping paper from her. This is, coincidentally, the same season that Shauna debuted, so maybe the Simpsons writers are secret continuity wizards. In season 30, we find out that the Chalmers are Jewish, as Shauna has her bat mitzvah. This is somewhat surprising to me, given the harsh words he had about religion in past episodes. Even in future ones, he's still mocking Ned Flanders praying, that's even how Flanders loses his teaching job in the end. And we've seen him in church with the Simpson family before. So maybe Chalmers is Jewish, maybe he struggles with his faith, maybe it's the chaotic nightmare again. This is somehow part of his time-traveling sex voyage, I'm sure. Anyway, the one thing that isn't inconsistent is their relationship as father and daughter. When they go to Costa Rica in season 31, Chalmers tries so hard to connect with her and suggests fun things to do together. But Shauna consistently rebuffs him, worrying instead about her boyfriend Jimbo back at home. Chalmers is so desperate, he'll even support her engagement to Jimbo. And even then, Shauna criticizes him for not setting boundaries. Season 33 doubles down on this dynamic. Shauna tells Lisa that she took up the drums to get under her dad's skin, and is incredibly rude to him when he tells her that dinner is ready. Chalmers takes solace in his garage with his beer brewing hobby, and takes Homer on as his apprentice. He picks up a picture and tells Homer, See, that's what I like about home brewing. You're there when it enters the world, so full of promise. And you know that if you pour your heart and hard work into it, it won't tell you it's pregnant just to mess with you. Oh my gosh, did the Simpsons just make me care about Chalmers' relationship with Shauna? Look at how happy he is when she's playing her drums for him. I mean, it's all part of a distraction ploy, and he almost gets arrested when his beer ends up at an underage party. But wow, this really does humanize the Super Nintendo. Also, his relationship with Homer is super charming. Had no idea that these two would bond so easily together. Who would have guessed? Personality-wise, Chalmers definitely has a streak of rugged individualism and old-fashionedness in him. We saw a lot of that in the Teddy Roosevelt episode. He talks about how schools have failed boys by appealing to emotionality and feelings. He was also a part of the Doomsday Preppers that Homer joined going boom, 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 pretending to shoot people, drinking his own urine, and planning to overthrow the leader. In the most recent season, he joins Homer's group to find a missing turtle, which quickly devolves into conspiracy theory whack jobbery. Chalmers even sings a conspiracy theory-based wedding song for Gil and Miss Hoover. It's clear from these later season appearances that even in his personal life, 
Chalmers is a very serious and conscientious person. They don't subvert our expectations much by doing uncharacteristically wacky things with him. The only one I can think of is this random joke in season 21, where he's swinging around nunchucks in a tutu. This used to be a small part of me. Given Chalmers' ultra-serious attitude, we saw the writers use him in a villainous role in more and more Springfield Elementary episodes. Villainous from the perspective of the kids. He's like the man behind the Skinner in many of these. In The President War Pearls, he's the one worrying about Lisa's popularity as president, setting in motion the plan to sabotage her and then transfer her to another school. When Skinner says something sexist, Chalmers replaces him and splits the school by gender. Given his complaints about emotionality and feelings in the Teddy Roosevelt episodes, I would bet that Chalmers had a strong influence on how the boys have turned out. When Lisa discovers that the school refuses to educate the Spuckler kids, Chalmers manipulates her into not tattling by having her be their private tutor. This is where we learn his first name is Gary, by the way. In season 19, he spearheads the plan to get an orphan from Shelbyville to be their mole inside Bart's group of pranksters. When the school is taking a standardized test that will determine funding, he tricks Skinner and their poor students into missing it and proctors the test himself. In season 22's 500 Keys, we get Chalmers' most devious scheme to date. Many years ago, when Skinner lost some grant money, he had several fake classrooms built to fool the government into thinking the money was spent. And when returning the mannequins, he forces Otto to leave, despite Skinner's warning about the bus's weight. This causes Otto to crash it into the river. Maybe it was wrong for Chalmers to let Otto believe he killed those students. We will never know. In that same season, he ends up suspending Mrs. Krabappel. He can't fire her because of the union, so he tries to get her to quit by sending her to a horrible holding facility to do nothing every day that she isn't even allowed to call Kafkaesque or Orwellian. In their Avatar parody in Trials of Horror 22, Chalmers plays the villain, fighting it out in a mech suit and dying in a blaze of glory. I look forward to seeing Chalmers again in the sequel. In their fantasy parody, The Surf Sins, he plays the villainous Sorcerer Intendant Chalmers, who swoops in and kidnaps Lisa. Chalmers has so much power in the school district that he can make Skinner and Willie make out with each other until the kids learn their lesson. Chalmers obviously has to be the heavy in a lot of these stories. Even from the very beginning, that was a part of his role. These later seasons had him squaring off with more and more characters, not just Skinner. We get Mr. Largo punching him over a balcony, Willie tries poisoning him with sulfuric acid, burning off the tip of Chalmers' tongue, Mrs. Munce's lawsuit results in Chalmers firing. In a future episode, Lisa easily defeats him in an election to become state superintendent, mostly because he kept describing her as a nasty woman when she would attack him. He even loses his job to Kirk Van Houten, of all people, in season 34. Kirk starts a social movement to stop teaching an embarrassing part of Springfield history, that movement becomes an angry voting block, and Chalmers gets overthrown. Basically, whenever Springfield Elementary gets transformed into some weird new thing, Chalmers gets the boot. Chalmers' relationship with Skinner did evolve in the later seasons, not only for their general dynamic, but I would argue in terms of their importance in Skinner's storylines. With Skinner and Krabappel breaking up in season 15, the writers had to find a different direction for him. So we started getting more odd couple dynamics with these two instead. Of course, it was still crystal clear how poorly Chalmers thinks of him. In the spelling bee, he's demeaning Skinner by always using him in his sentence examples. He'll continue to yell at Skinner when things fall apart at Springfield Elementary. In fact, his trademark Skinner yell becomes more and more prominent as time goes on. They'll do variations like Simpson, Sinner, Skimmer, Slimmer, Spinner. They've done pretty much every variation by now. I don't know if anyone else agrees, but this has easily become my least favorite thing about Chalmers and modern day Simpsons. They've beaten this catchphrase to death by now, and they keep doggedly picking up that stick. Anyway, they played up the personal angle of their relationship in the later years where Skinner becomes even more explicitly needy and desperate for Chalmers' approval. We'll get Skinner drunkenly asking if he's a good principal, or making bumble and grumble comics about their relationship. And to Chalmers' credit, 
he will occasionally throw Skinner a bone. In season 19, they produced two different documentaries for their students, starting Chomskin Productions and submitting them to the Sundance Film Festival. Nelson's film is so successful that they get terrible movie deals, and Chalmers is impressed with Skinner's questionable negotiation skills. Chomskin Productions still makes small cameos in several other episodes, so we can presume these two kept plugging away at screenplays together over the years. Eventually, the show just kind of started treating them like a dating couple. There's a smidge of Lenny and Carl with these two. In season 20, Skinner feels betrayed to find him at another school, to which Chalmers replies that Skinner misunderstood and that he manages all the schools. And their kids already know about it. Dang. Later that same season, when Chalmers gets sick, Skinner comforts him and lulls him to sleep with reports of test scores holding steady. At the end of The Debarded, Chalmers genuinely worries that Skinner didn't survive the explosion, telling him, don't ever scare me like that again. There are moments where it feels like the writers looked at a bunch of Chalmskin fan art and started leaning into it. Skinner gives Chalmers the Heimlich maneuver for a long time. Now, I want to be clear, the base Skinner-Chalmers relationship didn't change that drastically in the later years. Their default state is Chalmers angrily barking at him, being horrified by the mistakes, and trying to clean up the pieces. But there was more of a willingness to try new things with them, put them in different scenarios, like doing the morning snow closures at KBBL, or getting super competitive about a new $11 per hour job working for Nelson. They've even allowed Skinner to turn the table on Chalmers on a few occasions. That Teddy Roosevelt episode opens with Skinner calling him out, much to the delight of the other teachers. The many years of Chalmers and Skinner together ultimately led to their big relationship spotlight in season 22's The Road to Cincinnati. Chalmers has to deliver a keynote in Cincy, and after the cool principal gets food poisoning, he gets stuck with the dorky principal instead. After Chalmers has an anxiety attack on the plane, they end up on a road trip together. Then it's a series of mishaps and roadside vignettes where Skinner demonstrates that he actually does know a thing or two. Chalmers starts genuinely enjoying his company. But alas, after Skinner overhears Chalmers' plan to fire him, the two of them have an absolutely epic fight at a B&B. &B. These two just beat the crap out of each other, both physically and emotionally. In the end, Chalmers arrives at the keynote alone, but without his notes, and while ranting about their trip, realizes that he actually does like and respect Principal Skinner. It's a legitimately sweet moment for the two of them. We've seen Chalmers criticize and demean Skinner for like 30 years now that it's cathartic getting this kind of resolution. The funny thing is that I don't think these two are all that much different. He had made fun of that rod up Skinner's butt, but Chalmers is a fairly serious and conscientious character himself. You don't think of either as being particularly carefree individuals in their free time. Skinner is busy trying to be a doting son to Agnes, and Chalmers spends his time trying to connect with Shauna. I love the parallel that both of them have to deal with such domineering personalities in their personal lives. That Chalmers goes home to basically the same dynamic that Skinner does. Say what you want about Shauna as a character, but she really does give Superintendent Chalmers that extra depth. Maybe this is why he's so hard on Skinner that he projects his frustrations onto someone similar to himself. The school is the only place he has full control. I don't know, I'm not a psychologist, but it's something to chew on. The thing we can't deny is how much Chalmers brings to any Skinner scene. His dynamic with Skinner reminds me a little of what Smithers does for Mr. Burns, albeit with a reversed power dynamic. Like Smithers, Chalmers is influential in getting the plot going, but also for being that perfect straight man in their comedy duo. Chalmers is such an amazing comedic foil that he can make a buttoned up guy like Principal Skinner into a total clown. He keeps Skinner honest, preventing him from being just the boring authority figure to Bart. It's all rooted in such an old timey sitcom cliche, but The Simpsons did such a great job modernizing it screwing with our expectations, and milking every last ounce of awkwardness out of the situation. There's definitely a large streak of Frank Grimes in his characterization, where he seems to be the only person aware of how ridiculous his workplace is. 
But for what a self-aware straight shooter he is, there is always that glorious little blind spot that he just can't see something staring him so plainly in the face. Honestly, this dynamic is something I wish they brought back more often. Maybe after steamed hams, the writers realized they were just never gonna top it. I just miss that patented Chalmers blind spot, those big mood swings. It makes him a very unpredictable character to watch. Let me know in the comments what you think of old Superintendent Chalmers and your favorite moments of his. And pick something other than steamed hams, we all know that one is awesome. I had always wanted to do a Chalmers history video, which is why I saved him for number 30. His character arc is utterly ridiculous in terms of how it was executed, but I think it's one of the best examples of how to subtly introduce depth in the later seasons. As always, let me know who you'd like to see for the next Simpsons histories. Since I did so many in a row, I'm combining the Janie and Uter suggestions with the one in this video. Currently, there are six characters getting a lot of buzz. Cletus, Disco Stu, Jacqueline Bouvier, Gil, Luigi, and Mayor Quimby. If there's someone different you'd like to see, let me know. Maybe we can get a snowball of momentum going for someone in the comments. As always, thanks for watching.